auto patch efficient verifier based PAKE protocol tailored for industrial IoT and will be given by Bjorn Aze. Aze is uh, Bjorn is interested in uh, critical infrastructure and the floor is yours. Joint work with my colleague Benoit Labrik, who couldn't attend unfortunately. So you, you see the, t uh, the slides? Um, Better now? So, but now I don't, okay, so. So I'd like to talk today to, uh, on a topic which uh, uh, most cryptographers tend to dislike strongly, which is passwords. Passwords, uh, t a concept which uh, generates lots of problem. And this talk is about is the topic, in case that we are forced to accept that we can't avoid them, how should we make them at their use at least as secure as possible? even when facing tight resource constraints. And this talk is about the system level approach that we have taken in our setting. I'm coming from a company which is providing equipment for process industry. Process industry is something like refineries, chemical plants, medicament production, drinking water supplies, uh, and we are pr producing equipment such as sensors, what, what you see on the right side, which have to work on rough environmental conditions, and we are providing the equipment uh, which is also used in, in, in installations of critical infrastructure where we think that security should really be considered. Security is a very new topic for industrial control, so, and in the first step, when considering security, people tend to focus on machine-to-machine -machine interfaces and protocols. The human-machine interfaces are often considered in a second step only. When we've been doing this in a security assessment, we came to the conclusion that actually the human-machine interface is much more critical, or at least as, as critical as the machine-to-machine -machine interface, and provides the same uh, attack vector. And the most widespread authentication mechanism that is used today is a password. When deriving the requirements for our remote, con uh, remote access and wireless uh, uh, human-machine interface solution, we observe that in important settings, our customers will not be having public key infrastructure. We observe that network access to a central authentication service is not, not always available. For instance, if you consider air gap networks. So we needed support for offline authentication uh, with local storage of credentials. Some devices have extremely tight resource constraints. Specifically, if you rec some of you might recall, recall my talk in 2017 at CHESS in Taipei on explosion-protected devices. Devices might become physically accessible for the adversary. And we know that we shall prepare the architecture for sophisticated demands such as two-factor authentication, but we need to accept that many of our customers won't be using it at the moment. So the result of our assessment was, we, if we are forced to work with passwords, then let's try our very best to protect our customers' installations. And we concluded that we need a combination of two elements, a verifier-based password-authenticated key exchange, VPAC, in combination with a state-of-the-art memory-hard password hash. And we have looked around, and astonishingly, there was no such established solution around. So we we're forced, if we want to achieve these goals, to define our own protocol which is suitable in our setting. And our proposal is, uh, are the two um, uh, protocols, augmented composable password authenticated connection establishment, or in short, AUG patch, or the balanced subcomponent composable password authenticated connection establishment, C patch. The construction were designed to be for, all, um, for allowing more widespread use, so we aimed at and got the okay from our management to provide a patent-free solution which could be used in a large context and possibly also in standardization. And this con paper talk also considers preliminary results from a second review round, which is just now carried out in the context of the CSRG working group. In this talk, I'll first present there are two protocols, AUGPARCHE and CPARCHE, and the security analysis. I will show a, a short combination with other um, VPAC uh, nominations from a CFRG and uh, elaborate on the implementation strategy on ARM, Cortex-M4, and M0 microcontrollers. 
the implementation used to be the fastest one, but I've found recently an even faster implementation where I, would, where I will give the reference. So let's recall the, um, the slide, one slide from Chess 2017. <coughs> Many of our sensors have to work from 30 milliwatts around uh, only, which is the power that you typically have for one single LED. And that's, that's the power for the entire sensor. And security will be granted, and human machine interface might be granted 1 to 5 milliwatts, which is a challenge because any computation that you make there will slow down the login process. And users tend to get angry if it takes longer than four seconds. So we, in order to optimize for this constraint setting, we followed a system level approach where we did not only try to improve the assembly ar arithmetic, but also tried to optimize the whole protocol construction for the constraint server. So our protocol contains, uh, it allows for fast curves. Many uh, security proofs for PAKE protocols require prime order curves, which tend to be slower. Our approach um, allows for x coordinate only algorithms, which are, might be easier to implement and avoid the need of point compression. In case that we have a secure quadratic twist, uh, twist of the curve, our protocol allows for a simplified point, point verification. And the construction is designed in a such a way that we don't need full transcript, hashes, uh, hashes over, over the full transcripts of the protocol in order to guarantee our authentication. And we refer, one important point is, we refer the password hash to the powerful client entity. On the second level of the group uh, operations, we have also found some improvement in order in comparison to our CHESS 2017 results based on uh, a somewhat hidden result from the ad 25519 paper. And finally, one important aspect has been the optimization of the field operations. Okpache is a two-party verifier-based password authenticated key exchange protocol. So th this means we have one side, which is the client PC, uh, which might be a table PC, where we have the clear text password available. <coughs> Typically, we have large memory and could calculate algorithms such as S-Script or R12. And we have the server side, where we have not the clear text password, but a password verifier. Um, in this context, we are denoted with W. And this is typically a strongly constrained, or frequently a strongly constrained device. And the feature of the DPAC protocol is that knowledge of the password verifier does not allow for taking over the client role. We have three subcomponents within the AUGPARTIA protocol, which is uh, here shown in three different colors. We have the AUGPARTIA augmentation layer. We have in the balanced PAC subprotocol, the green part. And optionally, we could allow for explicit mutual authentication of the session key. When calculating the password verifier, it composes of two steps. In the first step, we have the memory hard password hash. In our reference implementation, we use S-Script for this purpose. And then we use a fixed base point diffie Harman group operation. One specific feature is that we consider the complexity of non-prime order groups with small full factors. For establishing of, an, of a session key, we start the protocol on the client side with a clear text password and the verifier on the, uh, on the uh, uh, service side. The augmentation layer, which, is, which precedes the balance take protocol, um, consists of we generate a, server, a key pair on, on the service side, which might be of ephemeral or of long-term uh, type. In the case of ephemeral, um, keys, we, uh, we have the feature of full augmentation. In case of static um, key pairs, we have more co have computational advantages, but receive only, uh, realize only somewhat reduced partial augmentation features. Username and password have to be exchanged. We calculate the pass, we look at the password verifier in the database and calculate the password hash and uh, calculate a Diffie-Hellman style secret, which we call password related string PRS, which is then passed. So PRS is a component where we, which we mustn't leak to an adversary because this, would, this information would allow for an offline dictionary search. So this information, this PRS, is passed over to a, a balanced um, PAKE protocol, the C part or the green part here. And there it is used in, for generating an ephemeral generator uh, for, an, for the epic, elliptic curve group. So this is a feature which is very similar to the Parcher protocol which is as it is used in travel documents. 
We integrate also all relevant associated data that we li would like to authenticate in a channel identifier field for the point gener uh, for the generator. For our reference implementation, we use uh, Alligator 2 and SHA-512. Subsequently, we use Vipi Hellman for generating a shared secret. We could uh, realize a simplified point verification if these groups have uh, secure credit exist. And the generated session keys match if and only if the um, password related string and the associated data match. Optionally, the session key is subsequently explicitly uh, authenticated. One feature for this authentication is that we don't need the transcripts. For the security proof, in order to get such a protocol used more, widespread, more widespreadly, you need to provide also a security proof. And the security proof strategy that we use uh, is carried out in the UC framework of Canetti et al. In the first step, we concentrate on the green part, this, the balanced sub protocol, where we prove that the security features of an ideal functionality which has been defined or suggested by Canetti et al. in 2005 correspond is indistinguishable from the security properties of our um, balanced sub protocol. So we, we replace our real world protocol with the ideal functionality. In the second step, we consider a functionality defined by Gentry et al. in 2006 and show indistingu indistinguishability between our balanced entire protocol with this ideal functionality. So we have the conclusion that this protocol is, uh, uh, provides this composable security guarantees of the ideal functionality. One specific feature is that in the functionality, the feature of explicit key authentication is not mandatory, it's optional, which this could provide an advantage when considering protocol which themselves, such as TLS, which themselves already include session, session key confirmation. The security assumptions are based on the computational Diffie Hellman pro problem, the complexity of the computational Diffie Hellman problem. We assume that the discrete log of a point generated by alligator or by a map to point primitive is unknown. And we uh, have had to assume a programmable random oracle, which seems to be the minimum assumption for a pay, uh, augmented PEG protocol in the UC framework. If an inverse map of the map to point operation is available, the security is also maintained uh, with respect to adaptive adversaries, which is something specific or uncommon for Diffie-Hellman style protocols in the UC framework, which typically are only secure with respect to static adversaries. There's one specific feature when using the UC framework. It's secure if you're having an unlimited number of concurrent sessions, but this comes at the complexity that you need to dis define a session key uh, a session ID, one could easily generate such a session ID with an additional nonce round, but in our case, we come to the conclusion that um, uh, we, not, we don't need to mandatorily to prepend this session, uh, this nonce round prior to entering the protocol. Okay, still it is important, our opinion, to have this nonce. It's also in line with the results of Kustos, Dimatal, and Rausch that we need um, to have a nonce if we want to use a random oracle in combination with joint state, such as we are doing in our, in our security proof. So when comparing <coughs> the, our protocol proposal with other decent protocol, protocols that have been presented, the most interesting other candidates are VTVP, like Pontcheval and Wang, and OPERC, which has been uh, uh, proposed by Jarecki, Kraftschick, and Xu. There are other PEG protocols which unfortunately don't come with an explicit security proof. Four of these protocols have, uh, are currently under review at CFRG for standardization. This table here uh, summarizes the, the uh, pr uh, results on the protocols which are presently, which come with a security proof. Okpach and OPARC provide stronger security guarantees than VTB peak by offering pre-computation attack resistance and, and universal composability. In case of Aukpache, this is an optional feature. In comparison to OPAC, Aukpache considers the more powerful adaptive adversary model. Regarding the pre-computation attack resistance of Aukpache, it's included in the e-print version of the paper. It's not, uh, not already in included in the, in the uh, version on, uh, available at CHS. 
OPAC and VTB peak are monolithic constructions and merge authentication and session key generation. This requires one message less than our departure. For OPAC, this parallelism comes at the cost of significantly larger password verifiers, even when considering point compression. So uh, for uh, OPAC, we are around 300 bytes, and for Aukpache, we end up with around 64 bytes. Aukpache needs particular little, particularly little computational resources on constraint servers in the partially augmented configuration. So we only have two variable point uh, scalar multiplications. The main design, this has been the main design target for the power constraint settings that are hard predominant also in, in Taipei. Unlike VTB peak, Aukpatch and OPAC both don't mandatorily require mutual authentication. This could be an advantage if integrating uh, uh, in, in integration in a protocol which already has this confirmation integrated uh, is desired. Aukpatch is a modular construction. We have the separation into the, into the augmentation layer and the balance stake, and this provides a possible advantage for separating the different layers when integrating, trying to integrate the VPAC protocol in a transport layer. So the user account complexity of the augmented, augmented PAC could better be kept away from the transport layer software component. So my proposal, for instance, when trying to integrate uh, a PAC protocol into TLS is to integrate the balanced sub-protocol CPARCHE into TLS and provide the PRS string externally. This also, doing so, would also allow for more flexibility, for instance, by integrating uh, two-factor authentication or smart card-based authentication, which could be uh, realized without modification within the TLS layer. And this would also allow for machine-to-machine -machine interfaces based on low entropy piece secret. Aukpatch is specifi specifically designed for avoiding implementation pitfalls and for ease of implementation, just avoiding errors that we have just seen, heard in the, of in the previous talk, so that you are present, uh, you have qu quite uh, not tempted to use non-cons in time implementation or implementations that might aspect that which might generate errors. Im we, regarding the implementation, we succeeded in reducing a bit the, uh, the computation cost per alligator by using the method from the 25519 paper. This accounts roughly for about, for about four, five percent of the uh, speed for the balanced sub-protocol. That's very similar what Riyadh has been talking yesterday on yesterday. And one important factor for the speed up was the improvement on the assembly level for the scalar multiplication, uh, for, the, uh, for the scalar multiplication. So for the field operations, we first tried Karatsuba multi multiplication that we had also had been using for the M0. Um, but in the case of the Cortex M4, we found out that accumulation was so fast by using the multiply and accumulation instruction that we fall ba fell back to the schoolbook multiplication strategy. We have ordered the sequence of the partial word uh, products, and you'll find them in the tables on the right for squaring and multiplication, such that we are able to keep as much as, as many operands in registers as possible. One important difference in the previously fastest implementation of Diego Aranda at, at, at was that we merged uh, multiplica int long integer multiplication and uh, reduction for the fields in one monolithic instruction so that we have less memory operands. And we avoided uh, function call overhead by using inline assembly for addition, subtraction operation, and the operation with a, t with a group um, curve constant. We have generated the assembly code by use of an automatic code generator, which handled the register allocation. Because the handling the regi different register contents became so complex that we uh, saw the risk that we make mistakes. So we generated this by, an, by some uh, script code. When comparing the results for the um, uh, field operations, the most remarkable difference between the previously fasted result of Diego Aranha, that's the upper line, and our line is the squaring algorithm, where they had around 250 cycles on the Cortex-M4, while we ended up with something around in the, in the range of 155 cycles. This speeds up specifically the inversion and the exponentiation operation for alligator. When using this improved field arithmetic, we succeeded in reducing the cycle count uh, for uh, X25519 into the range of 610 uh, uh, 
uh, kilocycles, which is, in our opinion, um, even uh, competitive in comparison with the much more, much more complex code uh, for curves which have endomorphisms, um, for instance, for Q. I would have liked to say it's, it's the fastest known implementation, but a recent update, as a recent upset, I would like to point you to the uh, work of impressive work of Emil Landgren, which even succeeded in reducing the cycle count down to around 550 uh, kilocycles. Our implementation of the full protocol is extremely memory and, uh, and RAM uh, efficient. So we end up with less than 600 RAM uh, bytes of RAM and less than nine kilobytes for realizing the full AUK partial protocol, including random number generation by SASA 20, the hash operations, and also some operations which we need for signature gen uh, firmware signature checks. So let me summarize. If you cannot avoid using passwords for remote access authentication, we recommend to use the combination of the DPEG protocol and memory hard password hashing. The result of our system level of optimization strategy for the constraint server are our proposals AUG Parcher and CParcher. We have shown a security proof for adaptive adversaries in the UC framework. And we have shown that this protocol could be implemented very efficiently on small microcontrollers such as ARM Cortex M0 and Cortex M4. And that this implementation could be made even uh, competitive with the fastest known approaches on these controllers which benefit from endomorphisms. We'd like to thank all the reviewers from Chess and also from CFRG for their care with their manuscripts and their, con their constructive and helpful feedback. Thank you. Time for one quick question. Okay, if there are no questions, let's thanks Bjorn again. The third talk of the session is